Setting Scoliosis Straight is proud to share this summary of a HARM study group member's peer-reviewed research publication entitled Anterior Spinal Growth Tethering for Skeletally Immature Patients with Scoliosis, a retrospective look two to four years postoperatively. There is great interest in finding definitive non-fusion methods to correct scoliosis in the growing patient. Anterior spinal growth tethering has been shown to alter spinal growth with the potential to correct scoliosis while maintaining spine flexibility. The purpose of this current study was to report the two to four year postoperative outcomes of anterior spinal growth tethering in skeletally immature patients with thoracic scoliosis. The RISSER classification is used to grade skeletal maturity based on the level of bone formation in the pelvic bone. RISSER sign classifications are on a scale of 0 to 5, where RISSER 0 indicates that there is a significant amount of growth remaining, while RISSER 5 indicates skeletal maturity or growth is completed. The researchers conducted a retrospective review of skeletally immature or RISSER stage 0 patients with primary thoracic scoliosis and a curve magnitude of greater than 40 degrees who had undergone anterior spinal growth tethering and had a minimum of two years of postoperative follow-up. In this study, a successful clinical outcome was defined as a residual curve of less than 35 degrees and no posterior spinal fusion was indicated or performed at latest follow-up. 17 patients were included and had their follow-up visit at two and four years postoperatively. All anterior spinal growth tether procedures occurred between 2011 and 2013. The average age of the patients at surgery was 11 years, with a range between 9 to 14 years. The average thoracic curve correction was 51%, with an average preoperative curve size of 52 degrees that corrected, on average, to 31 degrees immediately postoperatively, and corrected to 27 degrees at the latest follow-up. The range of curve correction was 5 to 118%. Revision surgery was performed in seven patients. Four tether removals were performed due to complete correction or overcorrection. One lumbar tether was added, one tether was replaced due to breakage, and one patient was revised to a posterior spinal fusion. In three additional patients, posterior spinal fusion was indicated due to continued curve progression. Eight of the patients, or 47%, had a suspected broken tether. 10 of the 17 patients, or 59%, were considered clinically successful, again, as defined as a residual curve of less than 35 degrees and no posterior spinal fusion was indicated or performed at latest follow-up. Despite most patients in this review having some remaining skeletal growth at the time of this current study, the results demonstrate that at midterm follow-up, anterior spinal growth tethering showed a powerful but variable ability to modulate spinal growth and did so with little perioperative and early postoperative risk. Fusion was avoided for 13 of the 17 patients. The overall success rate was 59%, but with a 41% revision rate. Understanding the parameters leading to success or failure in anterior spinal growth tethering will be critical in advancing a reliable, definitive, non-fusion treatment for progressive scoliosis in the future. If you would like to learn more about this research, please give us a like and remember to subscribe to our channel today so we can continue to create more educational content like this for you and your family. If you would like to learn more about our foundation, visit our website at www.settingscoliosisstraight.org. 
thank you.